Hey, what's up guys? It's James Diamond here and welcome back to another FL Studio 11 tech tip here on Sonic Academy. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a very cool technique that's quite common in genres such as Sidetrance and EDM. And it's the way that the producer will use a sample, most likely a vocal sample, and it will pitch up over time. And as the sound is pitching, it will also sound like it's speeding up and re-triggering at a consistent rate with the vocals pitching. Kind of hard to explain, but I've made this example track here. So if we have a listen and watch out for and listen for the way that the sound pitches. So this is the automation here. And as it's pitching, the way that the sound will actually uh, sound like it's re-triggering um, and speeding up at the same time. So it's a very cool technique indeed and hopefully you'll recognize it and understand what I'm talking about, what we're going to look at today. So first up, obviously you need to find a sample and this one is saying bigger and bolder and then you just need to put it into your track. Let's just have a quick listen. So an important thing to remember when doing this is to make sure that obviously your sample is in time with your track in the first place. And we need to actually render this sound out. So we're not going to be using it as it is. We're going to render it out and put it into a sampler and then use MIDI to control it. And a very important thing to remember is when rendering out, we need to make sure that the sound is exactly either one beat or two beats, or it could be a full bar but we need to make sure that it starts and finishes exactly in a bar or two bars, in this case, two bars. There's a small little gap at the end here. That doesn't matter. That's actually a good thing because then we've got a small section where the track will, uh, sorry, the sample will finish and then it will repeat itself. So we need to make sure that we've got the two bar render. So I've rendered that out and then I've made it uh, here. Make it bold up. So I've just put that back in. So this is what I've rendered out as exactly two bars, which we can see starts and stops. And there's the little gap there. So once you've rendered it out, we now need to go to the mixer, go to the empty mixer channel and insert Edison. We then need to drag and drop your sample from uh, over on the left into Edison. Now we need to right click, we need to go to tools and hit tune loop. And basically what this does, it actually adds in the kind of cue points for FL Studio to know when to start and when to stop the sample for when it's re-triggering. So after we've done that, we need to go to our sequencer so we can turn it into MIDI. And we're going to go channels and add a new sampler. And then we're going to go back to Edison and hit right click. Then we're going to go to tools and we're going to go to send to selected channel. It's important to remember that we need to make sure our little green dot is on the new sampler that we just inserted. If we've got any other samplers selected, then when we hit send to selected channel, it's going to overwrite what sample is already in the sampler there. So we go tools, send to selected channel. And as we can see now, the sound is into the sampler. So let's link that up to our mixer channel. And now we can control it with MIDI. So let's remove this. So now we've put it into the sampler and we've got our MIDI pattern in. Just solo it. You can see that the sample is re-triggering perfectly in time and it will re-trigger for as long as the MIDI note is playing. If you're finding that your sample isn't re-triggering, you need to make sure that you've got the use loop points section here selected. If I turn this off, you can see that it will only actually play the initial clip. It won't actually re-trigger and 
the sample won't play again. So ensure that you've got lose loop points selected. So in order to do the pitching of the sound, we then need to come here to our pitch section in the sampler and you'll have this uh, kind of value number here. It will usually be set at one. This is basically gonna control how far you're gonna allow the sampler to pitch. So you can put it all the way up to 48. I'll press play and then I'll move the pitch up and down so you can hear what happens. So that's actually pitching the sound and it's also re-triggering the sound at a consistent rate. So then let's put this into our project. And all we need to do is right click on pitch and we've created our automation clip. We can then do the same as what we have in this section here. And let's just extend the MIDI to I believe 12 bars. Yep, so it matches up at the end. And then let's have a listen. So as you can see, you can get really kind of creative and technical. You could do all sorts of crazy kind of automation and just really kind of get into it and see what sounds best for your track. One last thing it's important to remember is that when you're actually pitching the sound, we need to ensure that the MIDI clip is playing for the entire length that you're pitching the sound at. So for example, if I turn this back to one bar, the sound will play for one bar, but then as soon as it starts to pitch, the re-trigger won't work properly. So if you have a listen to this. So you can hear that it's not a smooth kind of transition when it's re-triggering. So we need to ensure that we've got the whole clip, whole MIDI pattern for the exact amount of time that you want to pitch. If you have gone over like that, then don't worry, you can just pull it back down as the MIDI will stop triggering at the end of the clip. So there we go, quite a long method, but it's definitely worth it once you kind of get your head around it. It's a great little technique. It doesn't have to be just used on vocals, it can be used on any sound. So have it, give it a try and see what you think, and hopefully I'll see you in another episode. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.